Hi there, welcome back to the homeschool sweet spot. If you're new here, I'm Kylie and I've been home educating my three kids since 2007. Thanks for stopping by this video. If you're on the lookout for other videos about resources, books, homeschool advice, stay in the lifestyle type videos, you'll find all of that here on the channel. So do consider subscribing. I aim to release two videos each week. Today, I wanted to take you on a walk through the lab of Mr. Q's physical science program for the primary years. So let's jump right in, shall we? So firstly, let me begin by saying that yes, I have had these printed and bound. I'm just an old fashioned kind of girl. You do not need to print these at all. They are only available as downloadable PDFs. There are printable worksheets that go along with each lesson, but that's only two or three sheets per lesson. The rest of this does not to be, uh, need to be printed in any way, shape or form. You can all just be read on a tablet or a laptop or whatever you use to read your PDFs. So the classic science range is put out by a high school teacher, uh, Mr. Scott McQuery. Several years back, Scott ran some workshops with homeschoolers and he came to the realization that there wasn't a great deal on the market that was quality science aimed directly at homeschooling parents. And so anyone can pick up one of these guides, work through them with their children and feel confident that they are teaching appropriate science for the appropriate age of their child. So I'm just going to run you through these quickly, give you some of my pros and cons for them. Um, if you've been around here for any length of time, you know that we used the chemistry level of this last year and we're doing obviously the physical science this year. So let's start with the parent copy first. As you can see, fully printed. It's relatively thick, so there are a lot of pages if you do choose to print. So we go through first and have a look at the table of contents. So it covers pretty much the standard topics that someone in primary school uh, would cover under the physical science program. So you've got force and motion, Newton's laws, simple machines, energy, heat, light, sound, electricity and magnetism. Each unit is made up of four chapters. Each chapter includes a reading component, some worksheets, as I said, and most generally, two hands-on activities. It's important to mention with this program that the hands-on activities are not always experiments. More often than not, they are a demonstration to further demonstrate to the child the topic that they are covering in that particular chapter. So at the beginning of the teacher guide, you've got the full materials uh, list, keeping in mind that this is an American program. So you have got items, um, you may have noticed back at the beginning here, they teach the metric system, because of course, in the US, they do not use the metric system. So you just need to bear that in mind. We have found the odd thing that is pretty much impossible to find today. I don't know about in the US, but film canisters, uh, sometimes you can replace them with something else, but there has been the odd time where, you know, no one's using film canisters anymore. So that probably does need to be updated. But the bulk of the materials required in here is pretty standard type items that most of you would have around the house. So this part here that I'm just flicking through just walks you through uh, how to look at a science experiment in a little bit more detail. And then we get straight into the lessons. I'm going to skip the metric one because it's not necessarily that exciting for us. So let's get straight in to force and motion. So this is the parent guide, remember? This is aimed at simply at the parent. So it, day one, and again, it's broken down into days throughout the week. You can choose to do it in any way that you choose as this is what we do as well. We don't follow the plan um, that is in this book. But basically it lets you know you need to read the text. So the text in the student guide, review the text with your child, complete the student worksheets, 
again I think these are optional some of you will like the worksheets and what they give for your child and others of you will think that they are complete and utter busy work so that's going to be personal preference and then it lists the materials that you need for the two demonstrations that are going to follow it covers the science standards so remember these are US based science standards but let's face it there's very minimal difference between what American kids are doing and what Australian kids are doing in science. So the main definitions and the main points that this particular lesson is actually looking at are then listed. You've got some discussion questions which is really helpful when you get to topics that you may be not comfortable covering and we have had this on several occasions in both the chemistry guide and in the physical science guide where we're so thankful to have these so that we can discuss this further with our children. You've got the answers to the worksheets and then the second day or whenever you choose to do it next it explains to you what the hands-on demonstration is. So a car with square wheels, yeah right. Children will construct a vehicle with an unusual twist. Gives you all the materials, full step-by-step -step instructions. Now, my one negative with this program, at least half of the activities I personally feel would strongly benefit from photographic directions. So if Scott ever updated this, this is what I would be pushing for, photographic directions because sometimes we have been and we, as you know we do this with a group of people so it's not just me have been scratching our heads trying to figure out what the directions actually are telling us to do not every time sometimes so I think that's a, a negative but you go through you do the next demonstration when an object is put into motion it stays in motion until an outside force acts against it so this is as simple as two people holding a bed sheet up and you're throwing eggs against a bed sheet so loads of fun hands-on activities but he's very uh, careful to explain the full explanation of what is going on in terms of the topic being taught so again this is the teacher guide so every lesson as you work your way through is laid out basically the same you will come to a stage where you'll have some review worksheets which will be in the student guide but the answers for the reviews are in the teacher manual and then they do do mini exams so the exams are very simple they're generally just matching definitions to, uh, matching sorry they're generally just matching definitions with the words um, and then you move on just to basically ensure that the children are remembering what they're learning you've got some fill in the blank style activities so the exams are basically the same as the weekly worksheets so that is the parent guide And then we have the student copy. So remembering, as I said, there is no need to print this. Uh, this can all be done on however you read your own PDFs yourself at home. Again, you've got the table of contents. And then this one just gets straight in. So chapter one, we're looking at the metric system. So this is read aloud or depending on your child and where you are in your own home, the child may choose to read this themselves and it is written directly as though the child is going to read it for themselves so as you can see it's nice and bright it's not overwhelming with oodles and oodles of text on every single page it's got not lots of photographic images and cartoony style for images to dress it up a little bit and make it a little bit more interesting and then each lesson also has what I call the worksheets to go along with it. So as you can see with this particular chapter, the worksheets are comparing and contrasting the following vocabulary words. So we've got acceleration and deceleration. How are they the same? So the student here is looking at or getting that preliminary practice in comparing and contrasting. 
And here we've just got simple matching definitions to words. And then a fill in the blank exercise. So most of the lessons follow that same pattern. You will do some reading. Sometimes if we want a little bit more, we'll jump on and look for a YouTube video that goes along with it. And then you'll have worksheets. So here we've got circling the correct answer, find the hidden words, crosswords, and then we're straight into a unit review. And you keep going just like that. I have really enjoyed this program. In terms of what we've used in the past for science, it's one of the better programs that is easy to implement in your home. It's an easy program to pick up and grab a couple of other homeschooling friends and do it together. It just makes it simple and relatively straightforward, as I said earlier, for any person to pick this up and feel confident in teaching science. The negative to this is, yes, at times we have found the instructions challenging to follow, and at times we felt that the added addition of some photographic images would really go a long way to enhance this program. But apart from that, this has definitely been one of the best programs that we have used with our kids and it works fabulously in small co-op settings.